The Gigabyte Gaming 360 is a budget-friendly new cooler on the market for those looking at upgrading their all-in-ones but aren't ready to spend thousands on doing so. While this cooler doesn't pack the most up-to-date features, it actually gets the job done and I was quite impressed with how it's performed. Gigabyte sent over this cooler for me to test out alongside the Aorus B850 Elite motherboard. This review will focus just on the cooler itself, the installation design and performance, so if you want to see the B850 in action, be sure to check out the other video. I'll leave a link in the description down below. The Gigabyte Gaming 360 comes in two models. You can get the ice white version and this black version. It supports both Intel LGA1700, LGA1851, 115X and 1200, while at the same time it has support for AMD AM5 and AMD AM4. The start to finish experience for this cooler is pretty straightforward. In the box, Gigabyte has included everything you need. You'll find the paper manual, all the brackets, three fans which are already installed and attached to the radiator, and the pump is of course attached to that too. I actually love the fact that Gigabyte already pre-installed the fans onto this radiator because it saves so much time and you don't have to go and screw four screws into every fan. Like the Waterforce X2360 cooler which I've also reviewed, check out the video on the channel, these fans on the cooler are connected to one another, however they aren't chained together magnetically, instead they are tethered together as one set and a single cable controls the RGB and fan controls. It does mean that cable management is much easier to get around and generally speaking it will result in a much cleaner and easier experience for your build. So think of this cooler as a literal all-in-one. The fans and radiator and pump are just one object. The fans are 120mm, altogether the radiator bracket width and thickness, you're looking at 403mm in length, 120mm in width and 35mm in thickness. The pump is then 66mm by 66mm and is 63mm thick, so kind of like a perfect square but not really. The fans range from between 500 and 2200 RPM and the pump speed can go up to 4500 RPM. Gigabyte promises that the system doesn't go above 35 decibels, which is completely reasonable. The fans are then of course ARGB and can be tweaked through the Gigabyte control center. As for the pump, it includes a removable magnetic faceplate that simply attaches and detaches to the pump. You can likely get these printed yourself and add them in, but it only comes with one set of decals in the box. It is then connected with tubing that measures 395mm. Installation is quite simple, of course it all depends on your system and the board, but for AM5 I had to install the standoff screws onto the board after removing those funny black brackets around the CPU socket. You then attach metal brackets onto the pump itself. Each bracket then goes into a nifty little cutout on the pump, so it's easy to know exactly where they go. Basically, they just slide in and you can't mess this up as a result. The rest is just as simple. I applied my fancy colored Cooler Master Thermal Paste, this time going for yellow because I was having a yellow kind of day. I then stuck on the pump and used the tightening screws to fasten down the pump. Like all coolers, you'll want to slowly screw down each corner bit by bit to evenly spread out the thermal paste underneath it. And that's about it, the cooler was then installed and ready to go. I set up the B850, updated the BIOS and got the bench ready for tests. Again, you can find all the motherboard tests like the thermals and performance benchmarks on that content. This just focuses on the CPU and the cooler. I tested out the Gigabyte Gaming 360 cooler with the B850 board and the AMD Ryzen 9 9900X. I wanted to push the cooler as far as a general user would do, so I removed all the thermal caps, enabled PBO and ran some benchmarks. During my test, the cooler of course kept the Ryzen 9900X at around 93 degrees Celsius on 50% speed, and then 90 degrees Celsius on 100% speed. Multi-core tests on Cinebench then dropped down to 65 degrees Celsius, even pushing the CPU to its max and using as many tweaks as possible without manually overclocking, the cooler did a pretty casual job of keeping the CPU cool. I won't say there was any moment where the cooler had to ramp up drastically to cool down the CPU. The difference between 50% and 100% kind of felt even mundane, which means the cooler would easily be able to keep the CPU cool even if you had to bypass the PPO and really push the CPU into the 100 degree mark. Noise-wise, the cooler isn't the quietest I've tested. It did hit 33 decibel spectrum on 100%, but again, that is when I forced the cooler to that speed. I don't think there'll be many cases where the general user will have to run this fan speed that fast. 
even the pump was quite capable at 3200 RPM, which is 1000 RPM less than its max speed. I do think that the Gigabyte Gaming 360 cooler is quite a hidden gem on the market if you ask me. I didn't expect it to pack such an approachable design and installation, and its performance is actually quite remarkable. It can essentially juggle any high-end CPU with ease, and I don't think there's a scenario where this cooler will result in any thermal throttling, not without bypassing the factory overclocking in the first place. Every test I ran was met with the expected and capable results even without nudging on the real thermal caps on the CPU. It goes to show how well this cooler performs. I also enjoyed how easy it was to get up and running, and the all-in-one build design of the fans and the radiator attached together will make this really easy to install even for the general user. For me it saved time and prevented any issue. Believe it or not, but people still put their fans the wrong way around, so for Gigabyte to have them already pre-installed to the radiator does help a lot. Of course you can always remove them by yourself and swap them around if you're building an exhaust point rather than an intake point for your fans. Of course if you're interested in the motherboard and want to see how that performed, be sure to check out that content on the channel too. There I review the B850 board and its thermals alongside the cooler, but together this cooler and the B850 do make for an awesome combination, of which will only cost you a fraction of what you would pay for some high end products. The nice thing here is that both products won't cost you a small fortune. The Gigabyte Gaming All-in-One Cooler is an incredibly well priced water cooler and it really should be on your radar. So those are my thoughts on this cooler, are you looking to pick it up, let me know in the comments down below. While you're here be sure to check out my other content on the channel and subscribe for future content like this. Until next time, farewell.